Welcome to this short overview of the graphical user interface of the Trace Tracker Navigator. We will base this on the online demo of GTNet at demo.globaltraceability.net. In the examples, we will use the Joe's cattle farming in the lower left. To get the username and password, please use the request form at demo.globaltraceability.net. First, we must log in. This is the welcoming page of this particular TIX. TIX is short for Traceability Information Exchange. A TIX works as a front-end system for a company's GTNet solution. The view consists of four main parts. The URL of the current object is displayed by the browser. Information about the object in the URL is displayed in the main body of the view. On the left, there is a set of menus. These will not be covered here. Please refer to the reference manual for details. Lastly, there is a row of icons. We will take a closer look at how these icons can be used to navigate traceable entities in GTNet. The three leftmost icons are shortcuts to lists of stations, batches and trade units. We will use the list of trade units in the following. Clicking the trade unit icon produces a list of trade units in the main body. Since there are many such objects available, the presentation is divided into a number of pages. Items that are underlined are hyperlinked. So we click the topmost element. This is the default presentation of a trade unit. There are a number of hyperlinked fields. Because of limited display area, we look at one field at a time. We will start by looking at the legend. This legend tells us how different types of traceable entities are illustrated. Hexagons are used for trade units and squares are used for batches. The important difference between trade units and batches is that trade units are traded between companies while batches are internal to companies. Trade units need globally unique identifiers to make sense. Back with the default view, we can inspect the four different sections in the view. Internal graph, textual details about the particular object, properties, transformations. We click the hide and show to move to the next view. Here we see details about the trade unit. Clicking the hide and show takes us to the property values. Here we see the property values. Clicking the hide and show takes us to the transformations. Here we see the transformations that the trade unit has participated in, both upstream and downstream. Click the hide and show to come back to the default view. Back at the default view, we look at navigating inside the internal graph. Clicking on an object takes attention there. The four corners identify where attention is. Clicking the icon at the end of the red arrow would make this object the focus of attention. For now, we will instead take a look at the global relationship between the current trade unit and the trade units belonging to other companies in the value chain. Here we see the relationship across the chain for influence and dependence on the particular trade unit. Similarly, there's a graph that also includes production batches. Production batches are batches internal to companies, and they have received special status as they are often associated with recalls, etc. The icon bar also contains functionality for searching. Here we see the quick search, which produces lists of objects in a way similar to the lists of trade units, batches and stations. The lists are extended with small icons to indicate the type of object. Advanced search also produces such lists, but gives more control over searching. Finally, if you need more details about the operation of the user interface, there's an icon for a reference manual. Good luck!